leaders who galvanized Christians for January 6th. They believed that January 6th would be a day that would be a prophesied intervention of God that would shift American culture. Hey, this is Pastor Ren, and I'm out here filming at the Capitol. We're seeing the Capitol building here, and what I, everything that I said was going to happen has just happened today. There is power in the blood of Jesus. We cover the blood. We cover the Capitol with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. We are the people of the Lord. We are a holy nation. What you just seen there is some footage from January the sixth, the horrific day that took place at the Capitol where you see all of these Christians and many ministers and pastors that were there singing, praising the Lord, and just hoping and praying because in their minds, they want to bring about the kingdom of God here on earth. And they think that they can get it done through the government. And many of the people that you watch on YouTube, some of these Trump-loving pastors and YouTubers and all of that, a lot of them were there, unfortunately. And this video, I'm going to split it up because I don't want it to be too long because I, I have a whole lot to talk about because God is very displeased with the evangelicals and especially the leaders that have been in the forefront for many years. As in the thumbnail, we talked about Robert Jeffers and all of them and even Franklin Graham where he's out there with his Samantha's uh, Samaritan uh thing where he goes out and feed and goes into disaster areas and does all of this great work in that way. That's fine. But you know what else I was thinking? You know what? Drug dealers such as El Chapo, even in America, El Chapo, Pablo Escobar and all of them. Oh, they hand out food on holidays. They do great things in the community. They're still worshiped. Many of them these drug lords and kingpins and wherever they are in America, in the world, in certain areas in their, uh, in their community. So just because you're doing some good deeds and passing out food and all of these, whatever you're doing, does it change the fact that your integrity and your morals are rotten to the core? And that's what it's about with these people because they're so concerned about bringing God's kingdom on this earth that they have lowered their standards to an all-time low when you don't think it can get any lower. And unfortunately, many Christians found themselves caught up into this big lie. And we're going to talk more about the big lie in another video because old Michael Flynn in his uh, on record on in a deposition where he admitted, Will, Will this, I ain't going to give you away. Some of you may already know. But anyway, they're there on a big lie thinking that they're doing some work for the Lord. But I've got the notes. I have got some notes here as we continue to move along. Like I said, I'm going to split the video up. I don't want it to be too long. But here you have these people. They're at that Capitol, representing, claiming to be Christian. All of these leaders that are in the forefront in the media that you see that talk about Trump is this anointed man of God. As you will see here, as they are at an event, where they're, where he's Trump is making fun of Kamala and Elizabeth Warren and mockery. And these are Christians sitting here. And then they want to act like they're so holy and then turn right around and pray for him. Take a look. Wrong with him. Honestly, there's something wrong. And there's something wrong with her, too. She's slow, low IQ, something. I don't know what the hell it is, but they lie. I've never, we, we don't need another low IQ person. We had one for four years. We don't need another one. But I was going to hit her really hard on the trail today, but now I don't have to because uh, she's off. She's off. No, I can't get over it. Who the hell takes off? We have 14 days left, and she'll take a couple of more days off, too. You know why? She's lazy as hell, and she's got that reputation. She's a radical left lunatic. She's further left than Bernie Sanders or, or Pocahontas. Now, Pocahontas... <laughs> However, today, Lord, we lift up the man that we believe you've put your hand upon to help restore America and bring America back to the place that honors you. And as you can see, you see what I'm talking about? 
these self-righteous pastors and all of these people, you know what? If you belong to any of these types of churches, I, I continue to say it. You need the you know what? You have to you're personally, if they don't want to repent, you're gonna have to repent. You're gonna have to step out of there and leave. You're gonna have to get off of that person's channel and leave. That's the, this has to stop. Because these pastors, many of them, as we talked about, and these leaders and all of these people, it's about power and money for them. Power and money, they want to be close to ride the coattails of Donald Trump right on into his good graces so they can get whatever they can get out of him. And it's a shame because people continue to fall for the okie doke and continue to go along with this. And they claim that the economy is so bad, but many of them are spending money, thousands of dollars to continue to put into his pocket and other people's ministries pockets that are lying in the Lord, lying on them. So I have here in my notes here that evangelicals are an accessory to the threat of our constitution. Why? Because on that day, evangelicals were there. They had no discernment. They set up and had no business being there off of this man's lie where he continues to dra have them drag them to the pits of wherever and ever. And in the end, many are going to be dragged to the pits of hell because of their lack of this anything anymore. And as we can see here, she breaks it down. This, I, I, I love her commentary. This woman just hits the nails right on the point. Take a listen. We don't take an oath to a country. We don't take an oath to a tribe. We don't take an oath to a religion. We don't take an oath to a king or a queen or to a tyrant or a dictator. And we don't take an oath to a wannabe dictator. That was a former... Millie is a professional. He knows exactly what he's saying. And as you said, it's not like he's particularly candid with the press. This is the guy that stood beside Donald Trump when Donald Trump was like, can't we just shoot the protesters? And he was like, no. He's like, can't we just shoot them in the knees? And he was like, no. And they ended up putting tear gas on them and they went and did the Bible photo. When we think about fascism, we have to remember that there are so many signs that are actually happening. There's weaponized nationalism. There's scapegoating of minority groups. There's mythology of a better time back in the day when we were great. There is obviously the cult of the leader. There's the weaponization of the Justice Department, the cutting down of the free press, right? And now he's talking about locking up political enemies. He's talking about rounding up people and putting them in camps. These are all fascist behaviors. And the sooner we stop pretending that that isn't a word that could come to America, the better off we are, because this is a real fear that people should have. And if someone like General Mark Milley tells us that this is a real thing, then we need to listen. The party deteriorate, but feel they have no place to go. Maybe you do. Yeah. And I think you saw a lot of that at the DNC. There was a lot yes. of Republicans that spoke on the DNC stage. And the general consensus was, if you vote for a Democrat in this election, it doesn't make you a Democrat. It makes you a patriot, right? The idea is, do you believe the American experiment should continue or not? Because under Donald Trump, J.D. Vance, Project 2025, it will not. It will consolidate the federal government around one person, making us about as close to what we removed ourselves from with our independence as possible. Mm -hmm. It's based basically a monarchy. We will completely can take over the Justice Department and you know, attack our political enemies and put them in jail. And we're going to round up people completely right. antith antithetical right. to freedom and put them in camps and deport them. But show me how you're going to mass deport people, please. It's going to be a giant open air prison system. That's a work camp. Like, I don't think we can pretend any otherwise. We're not going to bring in a bunch of planes and fly people to Haiti and fly people to North Korea and fly. Like, come on, we're not doing that. Um, So we have to be realistic about all those things. And I think that it's just very important that people realize the moment we're in, that if you have Dick and Liz Cheney on the same side as Bernie Sanders, something has gone really wrong with the other side. Mm -hmm. And what you're speaking to, this idea that if you want your conservative party back, if you're like, but I am a Republican, I've always been a Republican. You're like, your party was consumed by MAGA. Right. It is right. gone. Right. If you want your party back, you must destroy MAGA. And to do that, that's not just not voting for Donald Trump, that's voting for Democrats up and down the ballot until MAGA and election deniers and these perpetual liars are destroyed. And then you can build a wonderful conservative party out of that. 
Because right. like I said, there's going to be plenty of time for us to disagree about 25% tax rates versus 31% tax rates. And do we have, you know, wealth taxes on people that made this much money? Or do we have, you know, public school systems that are funded this way? We can have those discussions again, but not if the government itself no longer works mm -hmm. because we gave the power to a wannabe autocrat and his oligarch backers. We have to be smart about that. And people like Liz Cheney and Dick Cheney and Adam Kinzinger and those people are smart about that. Even Mitt Romney, if he's being quiet, you know he's on the other side. And as you can see, this, I mean, something has terribly went wrong with the society, our government, society, and the I think the Pope needs to seek Donald Trump's forgiveness. He's a pussy. I think God put him there. Get that son of a bitch off the field. Let the angel of the Lord encamp around about him. God raised up, I believe, Donald Trump. To say no to President Trump would be saying no to God. Romans 13 does give President Trump moral authority to use whatever force necessary, including assassination. Do not write that P.O. box, and you do not call that toll free number. You're going to write your checks to Paula White Ministry. You will never see sustainment in your life, and your dream will die. Trump is a test whether you're even saved. For church people, when you basically invalidate generals, I mean, this is. This is hundreds of hundreds of generals have decided to step onto the side. They have no they have no gain in this to say, you know what? We cannot stand by Donald Trump because the man is a danger to the Constitution and he's a fascist. We cannot stand by this man. He's a danger to our Constitution, wants to rip it away. And we can't stand by this. But for some reason. Pastors, people that don't have none of these people. They have no national sec on uh, national security clearance on that type of level. People that have sat in the room with him, John Kelly, the, the, as you see, the general Milley, and all of these people that's closest to him said the man's a danger. Said that he tried to steal the election, tried to d d overthrow our government, tried to do all of these things, but yet for some cr reason. Christians continue to make the excuse and overlook that. This pressure to shine, no big deal, because we're so concerned about getting what we want. We want to legislate things the way we want, as I have in here. We want that Christians have no regard for the law anymore. Many of these evangelicals that are out here that is standing by this junk, they don't have any regards for the law or constitution anymore. They don't care. Because, you know, they think they know more. I mean, it's either they think they know more than the judges and the courts and everybody that said, yes, that there was no uh, 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 that there was no evidence of fraud in the elections. The, the judge is saying that, that we didn't find anything. The Supreme Court, all of these cases of people and you watch Ruli Giuliani, uh, Mayor Ruli Giuliani, uh, Giuliani fall from grace like, I mean, the guy is just falling like, I mean, it's terrible. But yet people somehow brush that aside and act like it never happened or that's in denial. And Christians are going along with this to where now you're complicit in the fact that our democracy is, uh, is about to turn itself upside down for those. And I know some of you out there don't believe in voting and things like that, but it's still a danger. When you got somebody that wants to be in a dictatorship role, as as you see here. It's very simple. It's very simple. When the man running for president of this country says he wants to be a dictator, full stop, I'm done. I don't give a rat's behind what else he's done. Because that tells me how he sees the country and how he sees the future of the country with him as the center of it. And as you see, Michael Steele saw it right. I mean, he's one of the few in, in this, in, in, you know, not many. Some of them are silent. Some of these Republic, Republicans, they see it. The party needs to be blown up. And, 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 you know, as far as dismantled, not, you know, blown up with bombs because, you know, the YouTube algorithms, all that silly stuff can pull out your, take your words out of order. But, you know, dismantled and rebuilt because this is nonsense to allow this person one person to infiltrate that, that that I believe that 
Some people say it could go either way, that God has used this to expose the falsehoods and all of that within the church, which is possible. And at the same time, is the devil using him to dismantle the uh, the church and, 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 you know, this cause chaos within the body of Christ? I mean, it could go either way. That's a great question, once again, to throw out there. But, you know, we have out here people that in this mindset, that we've got the only way that we can fix this thing in the world is that we have to more so legislate morality to the point and take away everything from everybody because we want people to do it our way. As you will hear from this guy that we've heard listened to many times before, many of you know this was a white nationalist, Vincent James. This is the mindset that's within this whole movement. Take a listen. The only way to... Start the, 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 the return to, to moral order in this country is by force. It's the only way. It's, it's the only way. It has to be by force, at least for a time. We have to regulate morality by force, at least for a time. It's the, literally the only solution. And people have to start to realize that it is the, the faith in God, Christian understanding of morality. It has to be the foundation. And this is not going to be done by choice. It's just not. Not, not at first. It's not going to be done by choice at first. And there you have it. That's, their, that's the mindset. This is what's happened. The church has taken on this mindset. By force is what they want. It's by force is what they really want. And all, and I don't care what nobody try to say. They try to single out these little issues and this or that or that. You can't have. We we're gonna get into that because that just gets it drives me nuts when people try to pull out two issues, two or three issues, and try to justify and forget what this man has gotten away with. Totally forget this day. Mike Pence and I hope Mike is gonna do the right thing. I hope so. I hope so. Because if Mike Pence does the right thing, we win the election. All Vice President Pence has to do is send it back to the states to recertify. And we become president and you are the happiest people. And Mike Pence is going to have to come through for us. And if he doesn't, that will be a, a sad day for our country. They want to recertify. But the only way that can happen is if Mike Pence agrees to send it back. Pence, I hope you're going to stand up for the good of our Constitution and for the good of our country. And if you're not, I'm going to be very disappointed in you. I will tell you right now. I'm not hearing good stories. So let's walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. <laughs> should never be forgotten. It will go down as many of us when we're dead and gone as the worst day in American history. One of the worst because it could get worse than that. If he talks about taking that Project 25, 2025 and doing all the things, it'll be worse. Number one, I have nothing to do, as you know, and as she knows better than anyone, I have nothing to do with Project 2025. Uh, that's out there. I haven't read it. I don't want to read it. Our Project 2025 has developed a comprehensive policy agenda, but even more importantly, recruiting people, 20,000 people to go into the next administration, hopefully to help take back this country for you and for your audiences. We want no credit. We want the American people, if President Trump is, is elected again, President Trump and his administration to take credit for that, but it will also be a great sign if all of this is successful, that in fact, as we know in our prayer time, but maybe not every time when we're watching the news, that the Lord is still smiling upon America. Then, then that day, but that day right there will, will be in the history books and will be marked forever. And unfortunately, if 
evangelicals continue to go along with this and you're going to see generations totally destroyed spiritually because they are going to associate Christianity and with the false prophets that are celebrating, they will be celebrating and all of their other false prophecies, as one of my subscribers out there mentioned, the, all of their other false prophecies will be forgotten, but they will get credit for the fact that he won, Donald Trump won, and people will praise the false prophets like never before and give them glory. And all the glory will be going to these people as they continue to worship a man and lift him up as that golden calf. And, 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 we, and the worship will be like never before. And I don't know when it will get back for and within many family households, within many structures of, in communities and wherever. And just like David French mentions here. Five years or so, what, do you, what, what kind of conversation do you think we'll be having? You know, to be quite frank, I think a lot depends on what happens this November. I, I don't think people are outside of evangelicalism understand that if Trump wins in 2024, the zeal of evangelical support for him will be even greater than anything that we've seen because it will have been seen as a as divine intervention, as a miracle that this man subject to all of these indictments and now a conviction and a sexual abuse finding and all of fraud findings and all of this, that it will be interpreted as the world came against him, but God protected him and made him prevail. That will be a narrative that will lock into a big chunk of the church in a way that will lead to zeal that I think is on a scale that's even greater than we've seen and will also create, a, I think, a model going forward. This is how you win elections is with Trump-like figures. If Trump loses, I'm not so sure that we would have a fever break moment so much as a fever fade moment. Um, you know, people forget that a lot of Republicans still really liked Richard Nixon when he was forced out mm -hmm. in 1974. They did. And then what ended up happening was there was sort of this fade, not so much a fever break, but often a fade. And so I think you would see more of a fade, but that MAGA populist reactionary element isn't going anywhere. It's perpetuated not just by Donald Trump, but by people with giant social media platforms. And their 5 million, 6 million followers are not just going to disappear into the ether if Trump loses. This is a movement that I think is going to be relevant and dangerous in many ways in American politics for a long time to come. But nothing compared to the danger of if Trump wins again in, in 2024. David? So this is where we are. I have more to add to this because I want to read to you something I have here in my notes and another video uh, about that somebody had made a great comment talking about, um, uh, uh, let me see what it say here. They made a great comment about American Christian nationalism versus the disciples of Jesus. I want to read that to you in another video. We'll talk about it. But all of these leaders and people that continue to promote this stuff don't understand the damage that is being done to the lost within the world because they're looking at these people as the exact. And they're trying to put two and two. You for those of us that are truly saved, you remember when you were lost and you looked at people and, and, and somebody that was a Christian or something and you either looked at them as you had bad experiences and said, you know, they're hypocrites. Why do they act like that? You know, they, I thought they supposed to be loving. I thought they supposed to be kind and this or that. And it turned you off and you wanted nothing to do with Jesus. Or you may have encountered somebody with a loving spirit and, and they helped lead you to Christ. These people that stand by this, as I continue to say, many of them, they ain't led nobody to Christ. They, many of them has never led anyone to Christ and don't have any plans on doing it. All they want is power, fame, and money. And you know what? God is not pleased. And I'm going to believe and continue to believe that God in the end is not going to allow his name to be dragged through the mud and shamed and stood up by false teachers and ministers and people portraying to be Christians and stood up like that and put that in the limelight as if that's him when in actuality, 
is a facade and it's Satan hiding behind the mask. And we'll continue to call it out, shine light on it, take the devil head on. What else do we do? Punch him right in between the chops. Evangelists for God's channel. My name is Maurice Braxton. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.